Hi, I'm Katie. We're here in the Deadline studio with Kiki Lane and Thomas Doherty of Dandelion. Mm -hmm. um, Kiki, do you want to kick us off by just giving a one sentence brief summary of the film? <gasps> That's the worst question. I'm so, no, I'm I'm so glad. Oh um, no, uh, Dandelion is centered around an aspiring singer songwriter from Cincinnati, Ohio, who is at a crossroads of whether or not she can make it as an artist. Good job. That was, that was great. I, that was good. I've been practicing. <laughs> <laughs> I want to start by asking you about just what attracted you to these roles, because I just found the film so beautiful, and I wonder when you first read the script, what attracted you to it? Um, for me, I was, one, excited about the fact that this is a character that's from Cincinnati. I am also from Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, and that it would give me an opportunity to share my singing um, in a public way. I think people really just know me as an actor, so it was an opportunity for me to say, hey, I also do this other thing. <laughs> I grew up doing musical theater a lot, and I just think that culmination of singing and dancing and acting is so powerful. I mean, there's no dancing in this. But the, the musical element, playing an instrument, learning to play an instrument, singing and acting, um, is yeah, it's just such a, it's, it's so powerful to me, and I, I really do love that. And uh, I think this was definitely a role that I was really excited to do. I feel like I could really pour a lot of my capabilities as an actor into it. It was like an opportunity for me to really explore myself as an artist uh, and for the first time really. Uh, and when I read the script, I could kind of see how it would look. And it was so beautiful, even though it was on the page, I could just, I just could envision it. And Nicole is a fantastic director and, um, yeah, I guess all those things. Yeah, I'm glad that you mentioned um, that it was important for you to sing in the film. What do you feel like that added to your understanding of the character and just your like connection to the film in general? Um, I mean, I was already very connected just because, I mean, when I was growing up, I always said that I wanted to be a singer and an actress. So I've been singing and writing songs from a very young age. And so I felt very connected to that in this character that Dandelion has that same experience and we're also from the same city. And so I had an opportunity to also honor my hometown. Um, I got to write a song about Cincinnati and just really like, I don't know, be a hometown, <laughs> hometown hero. <laughs> For both of you, um, what do you think were the biggest challenges of this particular role? No money. <laughs> Tiny baby budget indie film. And my God, I went to do this film after having completed The Old Guard 2, which is like a $100 million action film. And I left Rome, Italy to go to Covington, Kentucky, and Cincinnati, Ohio to fight for my life <laughs> on a tiny cold. indie film. Yeah, all glitz and glam. Definitely a change of face. Yes, I would not suggest that to anyone <laughs> making that transition. I do love that Dandelion, the character, goes from a very fairly like narrow perspective of what it means to find success as an artist to kind of just really appreciating her artistry. And I wonder if you could talk about that journey and the ways in which it does or doesn't mirror your own journey as an artist. Um, no, I think that's a, like a a core part of the artist's journey of learn, learning not to compare yourself to others and trust your gifts, trust your purpose, and trust the space that has been created in this universe for your gifts. Um, and I think it's a part of the journey that all artists have to go through. I think a big part of artistry starts off as, you know, you're trying to mimic people that you love and people that have influenced you or you're seeing certain things uh, especially in the social media age of like, oh, this type of song got, you know, however many likes or like, wow, this person has this many followers and they make this type of music. Maybe I should be doing that. Um, so to see Dandelion struggle with that and then kind of come to a place of owning and being proud of her artistry, her music, her voice, her look, 
um, all of these things that can be very, it can be challenging to really just like love yourself <laughs> and love the art that you create. And so I think that's something I definitely connected to and I, I hope that a lot of our audience connects to as well. For both of you, I you have a bit of a whirlwind of romance in the film. Um, what's your process for kind of figuring out that chemistry and how you're gonna play that on screen? I think, I don't know, I think we just have a natural chemistry. We have natural, it's always important when you're working with another actor to have, to be generous and to, to be able, yeah, to give, yeah, to be generous and that, that yeah. energetically to have that. But we also did a thing where we just like look to each other for a couple minutes mm -hmm. in the eyes, just, I don't know, and it's really awkward and it's really uncomfortable. <laughs> but that's a fantastic way to just like get in tune and, I always also, I love the expression. I worked with a director once and he always used to say, you're breathing the same air. You're breathing the same air. And that, um, yeah. I think it was, it was easy. I think it's about, you know, feeling safe, um, feeling comfortable, being able to have those types of conversations. We had a awesome intimacy coordinator who- She was amazing, yeah, wasn't she? so amazing. Um, yeah, like helping us to really be able to have conversations. What are we comfortable with? What are we uncomfortable with? Giving us exercises to help us, you know, be comfortable with something just as simple as like leaning on each other. Like these things that we don't think about of like, no, that's like, that's a form of intimacy. So just having someone there to help us talk through all of those things, I think was really great. Yeah. Um, well, I personally am a big fan of a few of your, both of your breakout roles, including If Beale Street Could Talk and the new Gossip Girl reboot. And I wonder, um, like, just what, where you see your career trajectory from here? What types of roles are you looking for next? You go first. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, I'm interested in roles that allow me to be messy. Um, I think that I am often cast as people who are a bit more put together, elegant, beautiful, whatever it may be. I want to be messy. I want to be dirty. I want to have like zero makeup. I want to, you know, explore those types of roles um, because those tend to be very interesting and moving and challenging roles and stories. So I would love, love to do something like that next. Because that's real, isn't it? Yeah. To be real, to be like vulnerable. And that's absolutely... Yeah. Oh, can, can I swear? No, I'm not. It's terrifying. <laughs> it's absolutely terrifying yes. to be, like you say, messy and like strip back and yeah, be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah, it's a scary place, but it's also so liberating. And it's you get to really f like know yourself better and you find yourself more. So I think I would agree. And also a Bond villain. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. That would be. Yes. I'm seeing good. it right now. I see it. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. Mm. <laughs> That's, yes. No words. Do you know anyone? I don't, but hopefully this video will find the right yeah. person. Please. <laughs> <laughs> thank you both so much for being here. I really appreciate this conversation. Good. Oh, thank you. Yeah.